Yeah, real missed opportunity for Arsenal. In what sense? What do you mean? Well, I, I just think that Everton were vulnerable. And I think if Arsenal would come here and played that, that style of where they'd really controlled the game, got their goal, you know, passing was better, they got hold of the ball in key areas, converted one or two chances that they had, it could have been a really clinical away from home performance and, and really took the, took the sting out of the game. And I don't think they, they ever achieved that. So, you know, Mikel Arteta displayed there, he, was, he was, wasn't happy. Very disappointed. I, no think, I, think I think if Nketiah scores, Arsenal yeah. win the game. Yeah. Because all of a sudden that puts Everton on the back foot. Yeah. But the fact, there are certain moments in games that, that really help. And when Arsenal don't score and then Everton do, <laughs> Arsenal couldn't respond. Yeah, interesting. Um, one thing I was keeping an eye on was the battle for England's number one jersey yeah. on display here. We didn't discuss this pre-match, but it just popped in my mind. Jordan Henderson's had that jersey for a while, and he's never let Gareth Southgate nor his country down. That should be added. But he's never faced competition like this. Mm. The biggest competitor he had before this would probably be Dean Henderson, mm. who never had that Manchester United jersey locked down as number one for him. Then he, got picked, up, he picked up an injury anyway. So... What do you make from here today? I mean, Ramsdale, we saw him make a fantastic save, mm. which obviously after that Richarlison scored, but where do you stand on it? England's number one. I think Ramsdale's pushing him, but as you've, you've just said right from the offset, the jerseys, Jordan Pickford's, he has to hit a bit of a slump in form with England to lose it, in my opinion. I think he had a bit of a slump in form with Everton <laughs> last season and he, he had a run which wasn't particularly great and a few errors and looked like a, a bit of conf, uh, lack of confidence, but he never really let that creep into his international form. And after the summer that he had in the Euros, I thought he was excellent. Mm. He was outstanding in, in, in the summer for England in the Euros. So I think it's firmly his jersey, but he's certainly looking at a goalkeeper here who, who can mimic his qualities in terms of with, with his distribution. With his, with his feet, yeah. definitely. And, 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 and I think if Ramsdale keeps playing the way he's and keeps going, he's definitely going to keep pushing and pushing Pickford as far as he can go. I, I like Pickford. I think um, Pickford had a great Euro and um, possession is nine tenths of the year. Law usually in football, so he's the, he's he's the main guy. But you've got somebody coming through who he's only just really come through at Arsenal, and as Matt says, he he I reckon he needs a couple of seasons to yeah. really make that spot his own mm. and really come to the fore. A couple of years time, this squad is going to be monsters because that's two years under their belt. Yeah. They're going to be a different team. Yeah. These young players with two years more experience yeah. are going to be something special. It, it, it's a good point because we, we're talking about a keeper that has only had his number one spot at his club for, what, 10, 12 games. Mm. It's not long, is it, yeah. to, to then think about dislodging the, 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 the national team goalkeeper. Yeah. So th there's a bit of time and a bit of work to do for Ramsdale on that front. But he's, he's shown for me, he's actually surprised me how good, how good he is and how good he is with his feet. And I think that's, that's real potential for him. Mm -hmm. You're speaking about the youth and how good they're going to be in two years. Now, I jokingly said this to you when we were on the bench during the course of the match, but I was just asking, with someone like Saka, who is such a good player, mm -hmm. and if he wants to further enhance himself with trophies mm -hmm. in a similarish way to what we see from Harry Kane at Spurs, I guess you could say, can they keep hold of someone like Bukayo Saka? Yeah, don't forget, Mikhail Saka's already got an FA Cup winner's medal. He does. He does have so, a trophy. So least. I want you to take back some of what... That, no, that, but that, you, that you, you get what I'm saying. You're putting too much heat on me. <laughs> um, but Adam, what I, what I will say is that's the task of Mikel Arteta and, and this Arsenal squad, the board, are going to have to enhance this team because we know they're young. We know maybe they won't get over the line a lot this season in some of the biggest games. But let me tell you this, they will be looking at players that can come in, they can recruit to really take them to another level. Because you could see there's three or four teams at the top end of the pit, top end of the league who also aren't quite there yet. And they've got a young squad, so they need some experience in there. They need some experience that's going to really enhance these youngsters. It's just I'm harking back to some conversations I've had on the show previously with uh, Gail Clichy. He left, he went to Manchester City. What did he do? I think it was, he won two Premier League titles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Arsenal didn't win any that time. Yeah. Uh, you look at Robin Van Persie, why did he go to Manchester United? Because he wanted to win the Premier League trophy. Yeah. He wanted to win the title. I mean, you're banking on the patience of the player wanting to stay and be part of the side. Mm. What do you see, where do you stand on this and, and holding on to this key talent until the side matures enough? 
again, I, th I think we're talking about a player that is relatively early on in establishing themselves at Arsenal. But he's an England international. Man. He is an England international, but in terms of appearances made, okay, he's playing every week now, and he's, he is fully fully established in terms of the starting lineup. But you, you've got to do that over a certain amount of time, I think, before that that move happens. I think the, the players that you referenced there, they'd probably played what three or four seasons in in the team, starting week in week out, and then made that move. And I think Saka's a li little bit away from that to start panicking about whether Arsenal are going to lose him or not. I think he's hugely attractive mm -hmm. for a club, mm -hmm. big big club that is in a better position to win the Premier League right now than Arsenal to, to come and get him. It wouldn't surprise me at all because mm -hmm. I think he's a fantastic yeah, player. It's class. Um, but Arsenal have to do everything they, that they can to show him and to, and to keep improving him and to make it feel like that Arsenal is a club in, going in that direction where they're going to be competing for a top four. And I think that's that's a step for Arsenal. They took a bit of a backward step today because it was a, a bad defeat, but they're, they're on the right track. Yeah, but we're also saying they're going to mature into a very good side, of course. But what about the other sides? I mean, is, do we see Chelsea, Manchester City and Liverpool suddenly getting a lot weaker? Well, what you've what you got to remember is year after year, teams get older and teams get from the younger to get more experienced. And there is a natural movement of the better teams getting older, how do they replace players? Because a lot of it is chemistry. You look at Liverpool, Liverpool have the chemistry at the top end of the pitch. Jota even come in there, there's chemistry. But, you know, Salah's not a youngster. Mane's not a youngster anymore. So you, you take it two years down the line, they might not be at that level anymore. Mm. And you're hoping Arsenal, and Saka and Smith Rowe and, all, and, and Martinelli, these guys are two years more experience of going through nights like tonight. And that will put Arsenal in good stead, I believe. OK, flip side, what do you do with the, with the older players who are either approaching 30 or well over 30, mm. i.e. Lacazette, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang? What happens to them? Lacazette, long rumoured to lead the club. Mm. Well, it, it, it's interesting how the, the management of Aubameyang's going to go moving forwards and I think that, that that's difficult it's difficult because he, he, he was the key player which is why he was rewarded with the, with the, the big contract and, and a lot of Arsenal's I don't want to say hopes were pinned on him but I think he was seen as the key attacking player yeah. in the team it's a difference maker and, wasn't and, it? and unfortunately it, it just consistently I think he's shown it in moments but consistently that hasn't been the pattern in the last year to 18 months and yeah. it's something they've they've got to try and make it work or they've got to figure out a way as to why is he not firing in the way that we know he can yep. because the way he was impacting matches like this 18 months ago was amazing yeah and he, he was probably worked himself to be probably one of the best players in the Premier League at that time yeah yeah he's okay. a finisher he's a finisher yeah. he's a difference maker and when he's not making a difference his all-round game isn't quite there mm. yeah so I think that's the problem that's the problem right there. Okay.